God damn it. How many fucking movies do I have to review that are unofficial sequels to Zombie? I reviewed Zombie 4 after death where I dared to ask if it was worse than Zombie 5. Then I watched Zombie 5, fucking hated it, then set myself up once more by saying I was glad that Shriek Show never released a Zombie 6 on DVD. Well, best to my knowledge, Shriek Show hasn't released a movie called Zombie 6 on DVD, but I get emails left and right, Monday to Sunday, telling me about this movie called Zombie 6 Monster Hunter. I did a little research on this Zombie 6 Monster Hunter. Directed by Joe D'Amato, the movie is actually a kind of sequel to D'Amato's own film, Anthropophagus, a.k.a. The Grim Reaper. I say kind of sequel because it's really only a sequel in the Roger Corman death sport way, meaning if it's got a similar plot, some of the same actors, then you can call it a sequel. My copy of the movie is called Absurd, and that's one of its more common titles. Zombie 6 Monster Hunter really isn't that common of a title for this movie. I'm just labeling it as that so that people can stop sending me Zombie 6 links and start sending me Zombie 7 links. The first film, Anthropophagus. Wait a minute, before we go any further, what does that word even mean? It sounds like a gorilla muppet on Sesame Street. Hey kids, it's the Anthropophagus, and he's devouring the Twiddlebirds. Anyway, the first film, Anthropophagus, was a slasher film starring George Ape King Eastman as a guy who devours his family at sea and turns into a cannibalistic monster who stalks Mia Farrow's sister and her friends. That movie was so fucking slow and took its sweet-ass time that it felt more like I was watching some sort of couple's Caribbean reality show. In this film, Eastman plays another killer on the loose, although I don't think he's playing the same character in this film, mainly because in this film, he doesn't look like the rotting corpse of Gallagher's brother. Is it just me, or does Eastman have one of the most rockin' beards this side of Barry Gibb? I don't know where the fuck Eastman comes from in this movie. Just all of a sudden, he's on the run and winds up in the hospital. He is being pursued by the Dean from Pieces, and at this point, we're not totally sure which one is the good guy and which is the bad guy. Though judging from this subtle bit of crazy-eyed foreshadowing, I'm guessing we're going to see Eastman drilling in some heads. Holy shit, that's exactly what we see. Not a bad effect. Too bad it's ruined by the fact the woman is still screaming even when the drill goes all the way through her fucking head. It turns out that the man after Eastman is a priest who lets us know that the only way to kill the monster is to shoot him in the head. Not sure why this character had to be a priest, but whatever. There's not one scene in this movie where this character kicks ass for the Lord. He teams up with Officer Harvey Keitel Polanski over here and Barney from Silence of the Lambs to hunt down the monster. But not before the monster decides to slice a guy's head open. You know, to be honest, a lot of these death scenes are really inconsistent. We got these two death scenes here that are pretty fucking graphic and all up close and personal. But then we get to the third death scene, which is strangulation. Pretty lame compared to the other deaths, but they make it even worse by standing back about a hundred feet away and behind some trees. What the hell? When did this movie's dick get so small it looks like it just came out of the swimming pool? There's also this odd subplot about a family who's caring for their daughter who obviously did some damage to her neck, but is it really necessary to strap her into both a neck brace and a fucking crib? There's a nurse who's put in charge of babysitting the kid while the parents go out for the night. This kid, by the way, is simultaneously very bratty and relatively well-behaved. The rest of the movie is made up of Eastman stalking the babysitting nurse while the priest tries tracking him down. Wait a minute. Come to think of it, this movie's a lot like Halloween. 
I know, I know. Saying that a slasher film is like Halloween is about as original of a critique as saying that a forest slasher film is like Friday the 13th. Well, just, just hear me out. You've got the priest, Dr. Loomis, who teams up with the local police, Sheriff Brackett, to bring down Mikos. And yes, that's actually George Eastman's character's name in this movie. Almost forgot to mention that. And there's the kid, the movie's Tommy Doyle, who says lines like this. Mommy says there is no boogeyman. Oh, no? Is who still in the house? Who? What's going on? The boogeyman. And let's give a listen to the theme here, because even that is a little bit like Halloween. Blitz! Blitz! Near the end, Mikos is blinded like Michael Myers in Halloween 2, and the priest finds his way to the house with the help of the little kid. In this movie, though, since it's a priest and a kid, they have to make it awkward. What the fuck? Well, other than that, this movie really is a lot like Halloween, just with different death scenes. But actually, they may have benefited by also ripping off some of Halloween's death scenes. There's a scene here where the nurse gets her head put in the oven, and the scene goes on for so fucking long that I began begging the nurse to just play dead. Not for her sake, but for the sake of the movie. So great, we got a movie called Zombie 6, even though there's no fucking zombies in it. Just because he can only get shot in the head, doesn't make him a fucking zombie. Christ, even Zombie 5 had at least three zombies in it. And it's a sequel to a cannibal slasher film, which uses none of the same characters, and is actually a ripoff of Halloween. But who cares about this flick, right? Oh, now it's time to try to find us a Zombie 7. I'm not drunk!